And in doing so, we create density in our body. Things that Western medicine has labeled cancer, fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, migraine, headaches, depression, anxiety, all of that. There has been a lot of health documentaries that have come out on Netflix, and I've had a lot of feelings about those health documentaries. I made a two-part series on Netflix's series Unwell, which made me feel unwell, and I didn't think that a health documentary could get more wrong than that one until I saw this documentary that we are talking about today. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to another video covering scams and unethical business practices. Today we are talking about the health documentary Heal and how it may be one of the weirdest health documentaries out there. But before we get into the video, if you like deep dives and like to analyze, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you like this video, if you enjoy it, why not give it a like? Try it out, maybe. Could be fun. I have some particularly exciting news. The first sponsorship on the Cruel World Happy Mind channel. The sponsorship is with a company I am super passionate about, and that is the company Bright Sellers. So I turned 21 years old in March when restaurants and bars were closed and everyone was staying home. You still should be staying home. So my husband ended up buying a random bottle of wine at a liquor store and we ended up not being too happy with it and it was just kind of a general bummer of a day. Even to this day, my husband and I aren't super educated in wine and flavors and how to choose the best wine for yourself. And so every time we go into a liquor store or a wine store especially, we just feel super intimidated and have no idea what we're doing. And and we legit get nervous in there. <laughs> I genuinely feel like Bright Sellers solves all of those problems and is the company that we have been searching for. If you didn't know what Bright Sellers is, Bright Sellers is a company that helps you receive wine from all over the world that's customized to your taste and what you like. You just go onto their website and take a super easy and simple seven question quiz so that Bright Sellers can get to know your taste and deliver you wines that you're guaranteed to like. They also send that customized wine directly to you, so you never have to venture outside of your home, go to crowded liquor stores, or deal with the general intimidation that comes with a fancy wine store. My absolute favorite part about Bright Sellers is their educational cards that are just really fun and simple and tell you all about the wine that you receive. The education cards also outline the tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperature, and the origins of the wine. Riley and I even did a taste testing video that's up on our Patreon of us trying every single wine. Okay, this next wine is called Watch Keeper and it's a white wine. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I love this one. It's got the chills. Mmm. Lemon grass. Okay. After, okay. So Super fruity. Front taste. Front taste is lemon and grapefruit. Then middle taste is green apple and aftertaste is lemongrass. And I felt like I was at a wine tasting event, but it was just in our home and it was actually a really special and fun night. Bright Sellers also has great customer service. I had a question about the package deliveries and they answered right away, even though it was a weekend. And I just thought that was really cool. So I really enjoyed my Bright Sellers experience. It just exceeded all expectations that I had. And right now, Bright Sellers is giving Cruel World Happy Mind subscribers 50% off on your first six bottle box like I received. So just click the link in the description of this video if you are over 21 or 21 plus. And thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring the channel and being this channel's first sponsorship. That being said, I'm gonna enjoy this bad boy throughout the video, one of the wines that I received in the Bright Sellers box and one of my favorite. This is the Bush Telly and the card says that this wine offers fruity flavors of juicy plum, strawberry and raspberry abound in this wine with subtle notes of campfire smoke, black pepper and eucalyptus on the nose. 
It's really cool. I will be pouring off camera though to avoid a moon cat situation. I do not want people roasting me in the comments for the way I pour my wine. It's really just such a fancy wine. It's just so good. And well, let's get into the video and talk about this bizarre documentary, Heal. A documentary that basically claims that you can virtually heal anything with just the power of your mind. So Heal is a documentary that is written, directed, and produced by Kelly Noonan Gores, who also stars in and is the face of Heal. It reminds me of like Marc Jacobs by Marc Jacobs from Marc Jacobs. You can definitely say there was a ton of outside opinions and input into this production. Kelly Noonan Gores founded Elevative Entertainment, which has made the films Tooken, which is apparently a parody on the movie Taken. Kelly Noonan Gores is also married to Alec Gores, who is a billionaire. He's a businessman and founder of the private equity firm, The Gores Group. The movie Heal mainly dives into complementary or alternative medicine, also known as CAM. So these treatments can be used along with conventional medicine, aka complementary, or they can be used in place of conventional medicine, aka alternative. Most experts believe that a genuinely holistic approach to medicine would consider all types of therapies and then combine them in a way that fits best for the individual patient. But Heal does not do that. Instead, the documentary Heal disregards or discredits all conventional medicine practices and recommends replacing them with an alternative medicine practice. Now, I personally have a huge respect for medical professionals, especially doctors and nurses in 2020 and what they're going through, but I also love to keep an open mind about health. While I'm a cynic at heart, I'm also fascinated by the studies of the benefits of meditation and practiced yoga for quite some time and even did my teacher training. But the thing is, there's a difference between legitimate, well-studied alternative medicine practices like meditation and mindfulness, and junk science that preys on people's fears, appropriates scientific terminology, and over-sensationalizes their specific healing methods with very little evidence or data or studies to back it up. Now that is something that I'm not down with and is super, super predatory, especially when they target people who are dealing with chronic ailments or conditions that don't necessarily have a cure. The entire purpose of the film Heal is to ask the question, what if being the victim is merely a choice that we make? And if we change our mentality, what if we're healed? AKA, if you're sick and you're dealing with any sort of ailment, it's your fault because you don't have the right mentality. No joke, that's the whole thing of the film. That's the whole thing. You can log off and end the video now because I just explained the whole thing. Just kidding, there's some bizarre wacko stuff we gotta discuss. This film asserts that childhood illnesses are the result of some sort of unknown karmic effect, basically implying that sick children are sick because they chose to be sick prior to being born and that's how they justify all of this? It's disgusting. So now I have a really good idea how trauma, negative emotions, and subconscious beliefs can lead to disease and might be something we have to look at in order to heal. But what about the kids that come into this world already sick or children that get sick at a really young age? So people ask me, well, what about children? You know, children, young children that come into this world with some condition, how can that be from their subconscious, or is it? And this is where we begin to cross the boundaries of science and spirituality, and, and the words like karma, or destiny, or fate. The biggest problem of this film is it makes everything seem as if it's super scientific and well-studied, but in reality, it just throws around a bunch of scientific terminology to make its claims sound more supported when they really aren't backed by any facts. And it is all 100% anecdotal evidence and stories that we are hearing. It's basically an hour and a half long spiritual story time. 
time. And I, at least personally, would not watch any one of the story times on YouTube and take them as 100% fact. Your Uber driver tried to kidnap you for the hundredth time? Really? Really. Sounds legit. I mean, how can you deny the Heal documentary when Kelly Gore interviews experts and professionals with incredible titles like Divine Conduit, Medical Medium, and Neuroacoustic Wizard? Neuroacoustic Wizard. That is the coolest title I've ever heard. Sign me up right now. I'd actually love to sit and talk with these people. They sound super interesting. Will I take any medical advice from them? No, but would I like to sit down and talk to them and just pick their brain a little bit? Absolutely, yes. They're like, um, can I be your doctor? And I'm like, uh, I think we should just be friends. On top of that, this documentary has so many disturbing moments that I just cannot believe. So brace yourselves because we are reacting to some of the cringiest parts of the Heal documentary. So the documentary starts out with people sitting down and stating what their chronic illness is. So already you can tell that this entire documentary is centered and targeted towards people who are dealing with chronic illnesses or incurable diseases. Something that frustrates me throughout this entire documentary is they're constantly calling their practice Eastern medicine. The expert at the beginning of the documentary states himself, this is not Western medicine. This this is Eastern medicine and energy medicine. But where are you though? You're in the West. So what makes this Eastern medicine, especially when you're in a room full of white Americans, I feel like it's kind of offensive to Eastern medicine because they have a lot of advanced and practical applications and treatments and it's not all just like woo-woo stuff. And just taking woo-woo stuff and claiming that it's Eastern medicine doesn't mean anything really, in my opinion. I don't know. We then witness what I like to call the energy exorcist that happens, which really just looks like this healer guy is cuddling the other guy and like rocking him back and forth. And you know, sometimes bros need to cuddle other bros. Don't forget to cuddle your homies. It cures them. Then Kelly Gore arrives and makes her appearance and says that what's not normal to her is just how many people are getting sick nowadays. So many people are getting sick. Little did she know 2020 would happen and then boom, I bet her mind is blown now. While I do think we definitely have to monitor more of what's in our food and beauty products, like I just today saw something about how these major companies don't disclose where their meat comes from. But to say that we're more sick now than we were in the past is just not true in any way whatsoever. Like what about polio and measles? What about infections and other diseases that we've been able to completely eradicate? So when I hear Gore say that it's just not normal to her how many people are sick nowadays, I'm like, what? That was kind of like always a thing throughout history. Then this other expert comes on and says something that I was just like, what? It, they, and they just passed over it. They didn't explain it. He just said this and then they moved on before I could even process it. He says, tonic thoughts produce tonic chemicals. Toxic thoughts produce toxic chemicals. Tonic thoughts produce tonic chemicals. Toxic thoughts produce toxic chemicals. Sir, sir, what does that mean? Please explain, sir. The documentary then shows several scenes of LA and Los Angeles, particularly Malibu. And this whole documentary in general is just extremely LA to me, like very goopy. Funny enough, Gore did an interview with Goop that's up on their site for this documentary. Are we surprised? Not at all. And I feel like Gwyneth Paltrow and Kelly Gore are really just the LA Karens. No one talks about the LA Karens. LA Karens are multi-millionaires or multi-billionaires who, instead of going to Walmart or Starbucks to yell at employees, they spend their time in a complete bubble of ignorance, completely unbeknownst to how privileged they are. They have no idea and don't realize that not everyone can afford to go to Air One 
do yoga every day, see an energy healer, do sound baths. We don't have the time, nor do we have the money. We can't. We then encounter our first anecdotal story, aka miraculous evidence that this process works and is completely true. And that is through the story of Joe Dispenza, who was hit by a car while riding his bike, put in the hospital because of an injury to his vertebrae. But instead of receiving surgery, he leaves the hospital, citing a thought that he was supposedly fixated on at the time, that the power that made the body could heal the body. The power that made the body could heal the body. And he claims that power to be the mind. So instead of opting for surgery, over the course of several months, he applies this idea of working out his injuries mentally. He decided to just think and repair his spine, like envision himself repairing his spine. And then several months later, he was able to walk again. Several months? Surgery sounds a bit quicker than that. This could be just my ignorance to surgery and medicine, but couldn't it just be that the surgery was just intended to speed up the healing process quicker and that by opting to not have the surgery and go home and heal himself, all he was really doing was just slowing down the healing process? But anyways, Joe Dispenza goes on to talk about I knew that there's an intelligence that's giving us life that keeps our heart beating and digesting our food. So I decided that I was going to make contact with this intelligence and I was going to give it a plan, a template, a design. And when I was happy with my creation, I was going to surrender this creation to a greater mind because it knows how to heal way better than I do. What the fuck does that mean? What does that even mean? Hearing him talk about that scared me like legitimately scared me because it felt like such cultish terminology that I was like, is this a cult? Video, am I about to get recruited into a cult? We then hear a geologist talk about herbology and how herbology in the past healed us better than modern medicine has done now. Herbology in the past healed better than modern medicine. Antibiotics, bye-bye. Vaccines, bye-bye. Eradicating diseases, bye-bye. I'm going to stick with herbology because apparently we never needed any of that in the first place because herbology fixed everything. Like if herbology always worked, why did modern medicine become a thing in the first place if no one ever needed it? Geologist, explain please. Like this movie, what? Like, what? What is this movie? The biggest irony in this entire documentary is they talk about how they hate medical commercials or pharmaceutical commercials, but the entire documentary looks like one long medical commercial, like one long infomercial, the way that it's made. Some people can have allergic or serious skin reactions to Chantix, some of which can be life-threatening. If you notice swelling of face, mouth, throat, or a rash, stop taking Chantix and see your doctor right away. What an amazing gift it is to be alive. Focus on life. Focus on something that brings you joy. Focus on love. They then go on to talk about medical miracle number two, Elizabeth, who apparently had a extremely wellness-oriented lifestyle. So she did all the wellness practices. She ate raw, raw veggies. What's it called? Veggie raw, that thing. She did that thing. She was extremely active and yet still somehow despite eating nothing but raw veggies and fruit, she was diagnosed with stage four anal cancer. She then decides to meet with a spiritual therapist that informed her about her behaviors throughout her lifetime. Gore seems to subtly claim that Elizabeth's psychotherapy was the thing that cured her. Somehow, miraculously, Elizabeth was cured and went into remission. The thing is, Elizabeth also received chemotherapy and modern medicine treatments for cancer. People get the port in their arm. I started calling him because he was my little chemo pack. I called him chemo sabe. Chemo sabe. When the doctors gave you the diagnosis and the prognosis, were they trying to rush you into chemo and radiation? Yes, like, and I wasn't going to do it. 
because I always swore with the acupuncture background that I believe in natural medicine and um, natural healing. So I wasn't going to do it. I was going to go to, you know, any of the places that do the natural healing with the juices and things. I, did, I was going to not do the chemo. And uh, so finally, um, enough people gathered me up and brought me in. So I did it. And then I started doing a lot of spiritual healing. But instead of talking about that or really even addressing it, all they talk about in the documentary is how somehow Elizabeth's spiritual therapist has healed her cancer, which is just so dangerous to say. So after Elizabeth had a positive response to chemotherapy and only did one round of chemotherapy and was able to go into remission, she asks her oncologist if he thinks the wheatgrass she's been drinking at the same time is responsible for the remission. And her oncologist responds by saying that the chemotherapy that she did was probably more likely to be the cause of her remission. Whatever, and I said, do you not do you not believe in wheatgrass? And he said, no, you know, but if it makes you feel better. They gave me two different- And because of this response, Elizabeth concludes that her oncologist is just not a very good doctor because he wouldn't agree with her that wheatgrass also helped cure her cancer. Remind you, this is on Netflix. A documentary telling people that just thinking right will cure your cancer and that chemotherapy isn't good, that's on Netflix for millions and millions to see. Millions have already seen this. I just can't help but think about the tons of people who may even have cancer or a chronic illness who took this a little too seriously and maybe neglected any sort of conventional medicine treatment and opted for these alternative medicine practices instead. It's just so damaging. We then meet Eva, who has a serious skin condition, who claims that she went to the doctor and got prescriptions for this skin condition, but the prescriptions just seemed so scary because of the side effects. You know, giving me all this literature and all these different drugs, but I mean, they sound so scary, I don't wanna take them. It's like causes blindness and then heart disease and just tons and tons of side effects. So she decided to forego all of her prescriptions that the doctor was giving her and instead look for alternative treatments. So Gore advises Eva to meet with a nutritionist and with a Reiki healer. So I'm going to connect her with some holistic practitioners that I've worked with. And there's just some really bizarre scenes of Eva getting treated by the Reiki healer where the Reiki healer is just like poking her face and like telling her this like really harsh stuff and you can tell that Eva the whole time is just like super skeptical and kind of like what is going on right now I'm frightened of what I know and what I don't know and what I don't know I'm frightened of what I know I'm frightened of what I know and what I don't know and what I don't know it was a lot for her to take on it was a lot for her to take on it was a lot for her to take on it was a big burden 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 who else was going to do who else was going to do, do it? And at the end of the documentary, not only did Eva never receive an official medical diagnosis of her condition, her condition also never heals. It never goes away. And because she foregoes all of the prescriptions, her condition gets so bad that she has to go to a hospital. Okay, so my little flower blossoms are turning into big dahlias. Um, they're starting to uh, merge together and get really huge um, and extremely painful and hot, constantly burning up and then getting the chills. They immediately called some doctors and put me in isolation because they didn't know if it was you know, contagious, viral, what was going on, infectious. On top of that, she blames herself for her condition getting worse because she was taught this whole time that all of this is about her mental state and that she can change her illness just by mentally thinking differently. So when it gets worse, she blames herself and says that she's not doing things right. I just can't seem to dedicate myself. I don't know why, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, emotionally stunted to do or open myself up to that or there's just something that's blocking me. And it's just so sad to see that happen in real time. And I can't imagine how many people have taken on this mentality and then blame themselves for their condition and think it's their fault. I just feel like it can be so damaging to your mental health. 
Eva made me realize how much courage and sometimes cost it takes to commit to a holistic path of healing. As a society, we've been conditioned to believe that conventional doctors know best and that convenience is key. For me though, it's either pay now or pay later. And I really fear the long-term effects the steroids will have on Eva's body. On top of that, similar to televangelists and the video that I did on televangelists and their healing, Eva is the only person in this documentary with a physical ailment or condition, something that manifests physically that you can physically see. Everyone else... You cannot see cancer, you cannot see vertebrae issues, things of that nature. You can't see those internal things. But Eva, you could see her skin condition. So I find it interesting that she was the only one who didn't miraculously heal. Author and international speaker Anita Morjani, hopefully I pronounced that right, claims that her lymphoma had left her body riddled with tumors and her organs were failing. But then she went into a coma and traveled to a realm and discovered that the cause of her cancer was residual negative feelings she had towards her dead father. She claims that after she made peace with her father and woke up from her coma, all of her cancer went away. What Heal completely forgets, completely forgets, interestingly enough, to mention in this documentary is that Morjani also had her lungs drained and at this time began chemotherapy treatment, a treatment that she had resisted for over three years. Maybe that has something to do with your remission, but no, it was the coma where you met your father and made peace. I mean, that's amazing that you made peace with your father, but the fact that that aspect of the story, her treatment, her chemotherapy treatment is completely disregarded and not told at all is just like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? Do you not realize how many people you can harm with this documentary? How many people you might have already harmed? Like, this documentary needs to be stopped. This is so bad. Countless times, this documentary is discrediting the medical industry because there's so much profit to be had in things like the pharmaceutical and healthcare aspects. Should we give too much authority? to someone in a white coat. If you just give yourself over to an external authority figure, you basically become a victim twice. A victim uh, to the condition and the diagnosis, and now you become a victim to an authority figure telling you about what's going to happen in your life. But the thing that they neglect to mention is they are profiting too from alternative medicine practices. The alternative medicine industry is a $69.2 billion industry. Because of this distrust in conventional medicine, alternative medicine practices are gaining popularity at an extremely rapid rate. So you'd think maybe they have something to gain from putting distrust in the medical system, a lot of people don't realize how much you can profit off of being perceived as an expert. It's why I am personally very weary of any self-help guru. There is so much money to be made in books, especially best-selling books, sessions, seminars, and online classes. All of these things you can make a lot of money in. It's why the self-help industry itself is billions of dollars, mainly through selling books and seminars. It's insane. So there's something to gain from saying, don't trust that professional doctor. Instead, trust me and what I have to say. Throughout this documentary, there's also just so many undertones of privilege. From Gore traveling around to expensive locations, meditating outside of an extremely expensive looking hotel, doing things that are just not tangible to the average person. All of these aspects of this documentary are just insane and I needed to talk about it. It's just like, what? What is this? Heal is basically one long anecdotal story with as little facts, evidence, and research as possible. The thing is, in this documentary, every single testimonial also received traditional medical care treatment at the same time, yet all of their testimonials are unverified by the medical professionals that they were seeing. 
and the film greatly, greatly lessened the extent to which the testimonials received medical treatment. And no story or statement of theirs is ever challenged or doubted. This irrational yet devoted reliance on unproven methods has led to the widespread distrust of all aspects of conventional medicine, and we are seeing it today with the anti-maskers. Reality is, this type of false information gets people killed. It does. There is no way around that and there's no way of denying it. And no matter how privileged you are, spreading this information affects real people and it hurts real people. And we've seen its effects. We've seen it reach its peak of insanity in 2020. I cannot believe that Netflix has kept Heal and other predatory health documentaries on their platform for this long and that there is zero fact check even though they are contributing to this widespread of misinformation and distrust in medicine. They literally kept heel on their platform since 2017, yet they removed Parks and Rec. Netflix, what are you doing? Make it make sense. Also, please give me my Parks and Rec back. Anyways, I think that this video is over. My mind is telling me this video has come to an end. See you in the next one, guys.